Good evening. Welcome to our Q&A with our president of the school and with our administrator. Uh, if you don't know who I am, um, my name is Cole Salen. Um, I was just hired and brought on as the elementary principal and assistant administrator at the school. Uh, could not be more excited. A little bit of background on me. Um, grew up at GCA, graduated from here. Uh, spent my first seven years in education um, here at GCA teaching and working in administration. I uh, spent the last two years in Colorado, uh, but the Lord has just opened up the door and allowed me to uh, to come back here, and uh, we are thrilled as a family and uh, excited to get to work with the faculty and the administration here and uh, with you guys at home and our students and our parents. And, uh, um, and we just thank you for being here tonight. Hopefully tonight can just kind of be an informal setting where we can discuss some things and uh, that's going on in the school right now. Obviously, we've been hit with uh, um, not only in our school, every school, with a crisis that uh, no one saw coming. Uh, and so there's been a lot of questions out there that we want to address. So uh, with that, I think we're going to jump right in and um, we'll go from there. Hey, let, let me just say, Cole, very quickly, uh, Kathy, he's very modest. This is Dr. Sam <laughs> sitting over here. Anybody that's spent all the work and all the time to get an earned doctorate mm -hmm. needs to be respected and, and treated as such. And, and man, I am so happy for you. This time last year, he was just finishing up, so he graduated last May with his um, EDD from Abilene uh, Christian University. And what was that in, Cole? Organizational leadership. Yeah, organizational leadership, and then he has his uh, master's from there as well, and then his undergrad uh, was from Liberty University. And so we've got the total package here, and uh, so what that means is I'm sitting in the presence of very smart people, which feels very intimidating at times, but well, yeah. uh, we are, we could not be more excited uh, and, and, and I'm grateful for Stephanie Davis's leadership. Mm -hmm. We are going to greatly miss them. But I know that one of the things in this very office that we're in, my office right here, when Josh and Stephanie met with me one of the, and told me they were going to Abilene and they were uh, um, taking that move, one of the things that they talked about was their desire for Garland Christian Academy to totally advance forward. And school families, I really believe that God has answered that prayer. I believe that God has sent the Sandlin family to us. Um, they left on great terms two years ago, but when they left, quite honestly, I never thought we would see you back here on our staff. We all had different plans at that time. And mm -hmm. God's plans are always greater than our plans, sure. and so um, we welcome you to our team. And Kathy, this, these are exciting days they for are Garland Christian Academy. very exciting. I'm so glad to have Cole and, and Kayla back with us. And I had the privilege of working with Cole in administration for two years, which was awesome. Um, but I also had the privilege of teaching him at Garland Christian. So it's exciting to me. And you probably thought I would never be here with I you right now. I thought he would never be here. <laughs> he is right when he says that. No, he was a, a good student. But it, it does my heart. Good. I guess it kind of gives me the warm and fuzzies, so to speak, <laughs> when we have um, students that we taught here at Garland Christian that come back and minister to our kids. And so we're excited about you being here. Well, thank you. We're excited too, and uh, um, we're just looking forward to what the Lord's going to do, um, do here at, at GCA. So with that being said, a um, couple of questions that have come in um, from our school families that uh, we would... Um, kind of like to see addressed is one has to do with lesson plans. Um, there has been some concern, uh, not going to say concern, questions about is it possible to maybe put more lesson plans up rather than just a day at a time for the online learning. Um, is that something, you know, how is that being addressed? Is that something that, uh, that we're looking into? Yes, it is. Actually, we've even uh, talked as a school board and the administrative team of what we can do to help the parents and that's one of the things that we've talked about is having everything for a week up on uh, Google Classroom so that the parents can see it and then make their plans uh, that helps them plan out especially if they have more than one child 
uh, trying to use sometimes one device, and so that will be a help, and, and yes, we are going to be able to do that. Okay, um, and, and kind of along those lines as well, obviously we have a lot of families um, who are looking at re-enrollment um, for next year, um, and some are wondering about, obviously when we hit May, the fees change. Um, is there a possibility of an extension to kind of extend out, um, instead of making that, that fee increase go into effect in May, and possibly looking to extending the well, price? Absolutely. We want to help the parents. We, we know this is a difficult time, and so we have decided that we are going to extend that $300 re-enrollment fee uh, through May 31st, and hopefully that will be a help to the parents. Yeah, which, you know, that's the purpose of the school ministry, mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> is we are here to partner alongside you as parents to provide a quality, kingdom, education-focused learning environment for your students. And so um, I'm thankful that we can do that. But this is something that I think we need to stop and celebrate because I don't know that the average GCA parent knows this, but the end of February, so here almost a month ago, uh, crossed a, a milestone for Garland Christian that we have not seen <clears throat> in many, many years. We currently have re-enrolled for next year in our academy 93% of our current enrollment. So obviously that excludes the senior class because we are going to assume that they are <laughs> going to all graduate <laughs> and uh, they're all on track to graduate. And I know that's a question we'll address here a little mm -hmm. later. But um, through 11th grade, we have 93% of our students re-enrolled and planning on returning. We have four classes right now that are 100% re-enrolled, meaning every current student that's enrolled is re-enrolled for next year. This is a huge win for GCA. Uh, this is the first time since 1998 that we've been at 93% re-enrollment this early in the spring, which tells me uh, if God allows us to take the average number of new students that we have gained the last three years, if you average that out, Garland Christian Academy, drum roll, this is awesome, <laughs> is set to grow next year. That's exciting. That excites me because I know what a great product that we have. Not a perfect school, but this is a school that loves students and is committed to excellence. And I want to thank you, Kathy, for your leadership during these last several years. You're finishing your fourth year in May. Uh, third year is the permanent uh, administrator. Your fourth year, you were a year interim. And, uh, and of course, Cole, you uh, served for the first couple of those years uh, with uh, Kathy. And so I think that, that we are really poised for a phenomenal year next year. I think this is going to be the beginning of something great. <clears throat> I think with the Launchpad Learning Center coming online, that is not only going to be a service to our community, hopefully will be a service to some of our families in the school that has younger kids, but this will also be a great feeder to feed into the lower grades, the, the kindergarten grades, of Garland Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know several might be asking about, well, when is the Launchpad Learning Center going to open? And uh, the question or the answer to that is as soon as possible. <laughs> and what I mean by that is there are so many different components that play into an open date. Your state licensing, your local health department licensing, um, the hiring and securing of the staff and, and then just we're in a renovation where construction is happening. So construction is about 90% complete on the east wing, which is where the daycare will be located. Not the, Don't misunderstood what I said. I didn't mm -hmm. say the project overall was 90% complete, but the daycare area is about 90% complete. And um, 
So to, to name a date right now would just be like taking a calendar and putting it on the table mm -hmm. and tossing a coin out to see which date it hits. We, we don't have that date yet. We will be making big, big announcements about that as we know. <clears throat> and um, so hope you'll stay tuned for that. We'll let, be letting you know. But that's going to be a great feeder for yes, our school as definitely. well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Pastor, you brought up seniors. Um, and that is, especially for parents of seniors in our senior class, um, they have a lot of lot of concern about what the end of their yeah. high school career is going to look like. Yeah. Um, is there any opportunity um, for our seniors to walk the stage, to have graduation, uh, and, and even going as far as have what discussions have taken place as far as senior trip is, yeah. uh, and kind of where we're standing on those issues. So when all of this began to unfold several weeks ago now, there were certain things that I told Kathy, you're going to take the ball and run with. That, that's out of my, uh, as president, that I would not be involved in that. One of the things that I wanted to take on personally was how things would affect our senior class. Because this is a tough curveball to be thrown. Mm -hmm at our seniors. And I, and I want to say I've had the opportunity to speak to some of our seniors directly and I appreciate your kind spirit. I appreciate your understanding that, that we didn't expect to find ourselves in these situations either. But um, I have reached out to each of our seniors as a matter of fact either yesterday or today maybe for some in outlying areas like Roy City maybe tomorrow they'll get a letter but they should be getting a letter from me personally. And in that letter, I made them um, a commitment that we are committed as president and as administration to seeing our high school seniors, our graduating class, to be able to physically walk across a platform and receive their diploma and have a full-scale graduation ceremony. Now the question is, when will that happen? And if I had that answer, I'd be a very wealthy person right now. We don't know that answer. We know that uh, as this is being recorded, uh, that um, the, the president has asked everybody to stay basically sequestered, if you will, through April 30th. So obviously, we, there's a lot of things that we just don't know. It could be June. I hope it doesn't stretch into July, but it could be July before we have a, a graduation um, ceremony. Um, obviously, um, any information that is needed for grants, college application, all that, we're not going to uh, keep our students from having their diploma once it's earned. We, we can make those available, of course. But uh, we are committed to doing that. The other question is the senior trip. That was a tough decision. It was a tough decision. Um, we labored with, over that with the school board. And I, I want you to know that ultimately, even before the president announced and, and, and our local officials announced the different things, we were looking at this as parents. And we did not want to send our school students into a dangerous situation. So that was why we went ahead and canceled the senior trip when we did. It is our goal to be able to come back and offer some type of senior trip. Um, but again, we don't know what's going to be open, when it's going to be open. And quite honestly, you know, the later we get into the summer, the more our graduates may already have other commitments that they made. So there's just a lot of moving parts with that that we can't answer tonight, I would answer that, that your question to say we're committed to a physical graduation ceremony whenever we have to do that. Um, and if it is at all possible to do some type of senior trip, we want to do that. And uh, Mrs. Wood, I believe, is our, our class Mrs. sponsor. Mrs. Wood and Mrs. Lene. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they will be in touch as they start fielding ideas yes. and, and different things. Definitely. So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What, as far as the technology we're using currently for the online class,
classroom, sorry, the Google classroom. Um, we obviously we're in a, we're in a situation with every school is where this is unprecedented, where we everybody's shifting to an online platform. Uh, you know, about two and a half to three percent of our students in the United States of America are homeschooled. Well, now 100% are. How do you see us utilizing the technology that we're using currently to, to, to what we're using currently as our stopgap in between not being able to be in classrooms? How do you see us using that in the future? How do you see us as a school utilizing that to supplement what we're doing here on campus? That's a great question and one that we have gone over. And uh, when all this came down, I will admit uh, we had some uh, teachers that were nervous about this. I was nervous about it. Uh, quite frankly, parents, you know, were nervous about it. But man, our teachers have done an awesome job with this. And um, it has shown them that we can implement this technology to help our students in more ways. And that's one thing we want to do. Um, the school board for the past year has been looking at ways that maybe we can reach out uh, as to the community. Uh, we have some uh, kids that would love to come to GCA and they just cannot afford it. Um, but we've wanted to develop some ways that we can reach out and uh, some of that may be through this uh, technology that they could come in and uh, maybe they have a physical problem they can't actually attend school mm -hmm. this might be something that they could do so we want to utilize that for sure um, we see a lot of benefits in all of this and we are committed to the technology and uh, implementing that and uh, I appreciate the fact that the teachers have just run with this and they've done a great job. Um, I appreciate the fact that the parents have uh, been flexible and been patient with us as well. So we plan to implement this. We want to reach out uh, to our community through some of this and help in that situation as well. But as far as the technology, I know Pastor's going to talk about some of that too. Yeah, there's some things that we're doing, and we'll get to that here in just a okay. second. I Would it be a fair statement? I mean, you guys are the educators, so I, as president, my primary job is to cast vision for the school mm -hmm. to make sure that we are meeting the objectives, but I lean on our, our people that are trained in education. I'm trained for church work, not so much educational school setting. But would this be a fair statement to say that this crisis that has developed across our country. I mean, we have a lot of educators at Lavandra Baptist Church that I, I am their pastor, and they teach in school systems all around us. I know of one school that a number of the teachers were older and just said, we're not doing it. Fire us if you want to. We're not going here. That has not been the heart of our teachers at all. But would it be a fair statement to say that really in a lot of ways, for all schools across America, this has been a swift kick in the seat <laughs> that has pushed us to take the next step forward that maybe some teachers, some schools, some educators were fearful of taking. Would you agree with that? I agree with that, yeah. It, I think it was scary <clears throat> for all of us. Even the ones that were more used to having that technology already. I know even my own, uh, my own grandkids and you know they still were were nervous about all of this yeah. so cole you're coming from a large christian school mm -hmm. about four times the size of ours over 1200 kids mm -hmm. um talk about the role that technology because I, I think um, one of the things that that we want to make sure i know kathy you and i've had many conversations about this technology is awesome as long as technology enhances the right. education instead of taking away from the right. education. We rolled out iPads several years ago without a very cohesive plan. And Cole, you were here when we did that. Mm -hmm. You maybe want to speak to what that, that was a disaster. Mm -hmm. But 
how do we, how can technology be our friend and be enhancing the education? And how is it used in a school of 1,200 that I, I think would be safer to say probably has a larger financial means to do things than maybe GCA what would have at the moment, but even how technology is not utilized, just because it's available does not mean that it's necessarily utilized mm -hmm. in every area. Can you speak to that? Yeah, um, I would agree. I think, like you said, technology um, has to enhance what we're doing. It has to come alongside and supplement. Um, it can't ever take the place of real education. And I think um, when you look at the data and the studies that are out there, it shows that technology can be a useful tool. Uh, however, um, a lot of the technology that and a lot of the studies that have been done regarding technology have shown that there really hasn't been um, a lot of growth as far as academic achievement goes. Uh, there. It, just because you throw technology into a classroom doesn't necessarily mean that, well, students are going to learn at a better rate. Wow. Um, I, I think that's a misconception. Which we found to be true. True. Our, our, just throwing iPads in the classroom mm -hmm. did not cause our SAT scores to jump by itself. Right, and I think I think there's there's a fine line because at the same time, that's technology is the world we live in. Uh, our students are, you know, they are they're in front of a screen a lot of the time. I. I we read a study not too long ago that said that the average high school student spends nine hours a day on their phone. Wow. Um, and over 70% of that is social media that they're on, uh, which is a whole other discussion that we could have. <laughs> right. um, but <clears throat> technology is a useful tool when used properly. What we saw with um, when we had the iPad situation the first time I was here is that we gave kids iPads, and some of them had textbooks on it, um, but the major issues we, we saw was that either one, we're giving a kid, a high school student, this technology, and then within a week, screens are broken. Uh, they're not working properly. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we spent so much of our time dealing with iPad issues um, that took away from things we really should be focusing on as far as uh, education of our students. I think that when you implement technology, there has to be there has to be a starting point. You can't jump from A all the way to Z and say, hey, we want technology, here's an iPad, here's a laptop, go learn. Well, it doesn't work that way. We have to have a clear strategy of how we're going to implement that. Um, and I think those, you know, I think this is a, a point that is a starting point for us, like Kathy was saying, where it's, you know, we, we're having to do things we haven't done before. Um, so yeah, I think technology is not the be-all, end-all. Uh, at the school I'm currently at, we don't have iPads for kids. Um, we have... And that's a high school of about 350 350 kids. total, yeah, in our high school. Uh, we, we don't have <laughs> iPads for students. They, uh, you know, we have the same technology we have. We have computer labs. We have things like that. Um, but as far as school issued technology we don't have that um, now there is a push which I think is a good thing um, for teachers to use technology in the classroom because it is what our students are using um, but what that looks like that doesn't mean just issue iPads and laptops to everybody it's and would it be a fair statement I mean you guys are the ones that review I'm going to, basing by conversations I've heard our leadership have that textbook companies secular and Christian have struggled with figuring out how to implement this technology in a practical application. It's mm -hmm. one thing to yes. say, here's a digital textbook. Right. It's another thing how to say, take this technology right. and have a teacher apply technology to the classroom. From everything that I've read, that's something that that is improving, and I think mm -hmm. vast improvements are being made mm -hmm. each year. But... It, we're just now starting to get to a place that that is um, more uh, accessible, mm -hmm. maybe would be the word. Mm -hmm. So technology is great. It's interesting. We just had a church staff meeting on Zoom. And uh, <laughs> Kathy, you were on this. It was a train wreck because too many people were using Zoom today. And, and it just struggled to keep up. Um, so we want to make sure, as leadership, from the president 
across all leadership areas that technology that we implement is well thought through, mm -hmm. has a plan that enhances the educational experience, and can be easily accessed and used by everybody in our school. So I know from having a third grade teacher as my wife, there's been a lot of people um, that she has dealt with that are very savvy and tech savvy and understand how to do this. There's been other people that this has been overwhelming to them. And so we have some parents in our school that are very tech savvy and, and like, well, why don't we bring all this in? And we've got other parents that are like, I'm barely keeping up. We have one device in our house. How would we implement all this technology? So those are all things that we have to think about as administration when big decisions are being made. Right. right. I agree with that. Um, one question I have kind of back to technology is uh, I've been reading over, um, Kathy had given me the 1,000 uh, day strategic plan, and I had the opportunity to read over that and kind of dig into it. And one thing that I found great and exciting is the fact that we are getting all new computers in the, high, in the secondary computer lab, yeah. uh, which was a, a, a great need. Yes. Um, and that's one way we address technology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Some of the things that I looked at and as I'm reading through it and kind of, kind of jumping back into... Uh, GCA from where we have been and just seeing how you know we've identified things that you know we're under no we're under no preconceived idea that like you mentioned we're not perfect we have areas we need to grow and it's so encouraging to see um, that we know where our strengths are we know our areas we need to grow um, and seeing that we're we're putting a plan in place right. to actually improve um, but for me that that kind of just goes along with the technology specifically yeah. is getting those computers uh, in the secondary computer lab. Uh, is there anything else though, Kathy, specifically that you would like to touch on with that, that maybe our, some of our families at home don't know? Right. Uh, when we had the meeting for the uh, strategic plan, we gathered some of our staff, we gathered uh, some of our uh, parents and uh, got together on a Friday afternoon and a Saturday and just walk through some things that GCA uh, is great at in some of those areas we need to improve and um, really delved into those areas and I'll, it's not something that we don't that we did we put it together and we set it down mm -hmm. we have looked through it we have analyzed are we working on these things and I'm happy to, to say that yes, I mean, obviously we're still improving. This is a thousand day plan. No, it's a process. And so it's a process, it's a daily process. But some of the things that have come out of that, one of the things, one of the concerns was school spirit. You know, how what can we do about school spirit? This year we have had much better participation for things, uh, for the games, for uh, the dress down days, the spirit week. Our school spirit has increased, and that has been a blessing to me. Uh, it's, an, it's great to see our kids getting involved and enjoying that. Um, one of the other things that uh, was a concern for, for some of the parents was, uh, do you go out and hire all your teachers from one place? I actually started looking at that and went through, one by one, our teachers and where they received their education. and. Our, our faculty is very diverse as far as where we uh, received our degrees. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any one group that has more than 30% from, from one school. And so we want our parents to know that is not what we do. We, um, we hire from various places mm -hmm. and we want the best teachers. I can say we don't it's important to us that we have the best teacher for the classroom. And we've even had parents ask, well, you know, can't we have just smaller classes? I would rather have an A1 teacher in a class of 40 kids than to have a subpar teacher in a class of 10. Yeah. And so we're working on that as well. We want the best teachers. And I, Kathy, I that really is a great it. statement yeah. because obviously we're not going to have classes of 40. Right. But I spent a lot, so this is an area I feel comfortable speaking into. I spent a lot of years as a children's pastor. Right. And I noticed a very interesting 
the summary. Mm -hmm. I saw children's ministry workers that literally could go in and hold a, a, a an assembly right. in a gymnasium with a thousand kids and have every child right. spellbound right. on the edge of their seat learning. I watched other educators in a classroom of 10 mm -hmm. that could not keep the attention and it was a train wreck. So I, I think one of the things that's important to just mention is in a lot of ways public education has sold a false bill of goods, mm -hmm. a bad bill of goods, to keep funding in place so that there's plenty of money coming in that classroom, small classroom size alone creates a quality program. If that were the case, then the public schools would be mm -hmm. knocking the ball out of the park. The teacher is the key in that right. classroom. I agree. That is I the agree. key. I agree with that. Um, something else that um, was exciting and, and that actually we had already been working on, our parents had some concerns that um, the t tests and quizzes sometimes there were too many on some days um, and then homework on top of that you know or projects sometimes it was just too much they wanted us to have a system and we had already been working on that anyway but one of our students and I think it may have been Miss Haley Rich uh, developed in uh, Mr. Davis's class took the whiteboard and just divided it put the grades up there and each day either Haley or, or someone else went through and wrote down assignments including homework and things like that so that uh, teachers can see what's going on and, and try to keep that down um, and not overload students. Uh, every now and then it just happens and, and some of that is because of holidays and different things like that. It just it just happens, mm -hmm. but we are working on making that a priority where it doesn't happen. Great. You know, going back to the thousand day strategic plan, mm -hmm. I think it's important to know for our parents, Kathy, you've already mentioned some of the things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so um, the computer lab, getting that the 30 new computers in there, this is an exciting thing. So we, we just, um, received or, or ordered, we haven't received them, they're actually on back order from Dell right now because of all this virus stuff. But we, we will be getting 30 new computers for the computer lab. We have just updated um, the final 10 computers for secondary staff. Some of the secondary staff had new co newer computers, some did not. Those have been ordered and some of those have actually even come in. Um, that now means, with the exception of the elementary lab, which I'll speak to in just a second, that now means that every computer on campus is now on a three-year rotation. And so in years past, we just purchased a computer and we hoped that it lasted for 100 years or however long we could get out of it. Now every computer on campus is on a three-year rotation. I specifically said not the elementary computer lab because we are assessing what the need is. We don't want to spend money that is not needed when basically they are learning very easy concepts, keyboarding, office suite, PowerPoint, Word, things that you don't have to have a high-powered computer to effectively teach. And so we're looking at ways to, to be the best stewards of our money with that. But um, another thing that just it went online yesterday, it's already been purchased and is here. We updated to a larger, more powerful server for our video surveillance system. Because this is part, this was one of the things that was mm -hmm. mentioned in the thousand day yes. strategic plan. And so over this next thousand days that we're already almost a third of the mm -hmm. way into now, or approaching the third mark, mm -hmm. uh, in the next year or so, Lord willing, um, we will be <clears throat> updating uh, the remaining cameras on campus and adding cameras to where we will be fully built out at around 200 cameras on campus. And so what does that mean? That means students, you're not going to be able to pick your nose without being seen <laughs> on camera somewhere. But that will be a great security feature for our school. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that will be protection for our students, protection for our faculty mm -hmm. and staff. Um, 
some other areas that we are looking at um, addressing. Um, we are, our goal is by the end of this renovation project to have all of our exterior of the buildings controlled by a FOB, a keyless entry, which then will allow all the buildings to remain locked all day and students will be issued a FOB to get in the building during school hours. So they can go from the Coleman Center to the gym or the Coleman Center to a music rehearsal and be able to access the door without a door having to be either a monitor or somebody in the office having to let them in. So those are some key things. Um, one of the areas that we are going to be coming to you in the fall, we have a very extensive um, and aggressive plan to update our elementary playground, to put a, a fence around our elementary playground, to increase the fence. If it, it, We're going to have to check on, we think this is going to be okay with the city, may have to get a variance, but we think we're going to be able to get this through to increase the fence along the north side of the property next to the creek all the way up to the road. And that, that was pointed out as something yes. that we would like to see done. Um, we're also uh, going to be looking at um, the possibility as the daycare grows and comes online, we uh, have already hired um, someone that has the credentials as far as the education and the state and city credentials and certifications to be the food service director of the ministry. And uh, as the daycare grows, one of the things that we're hoping to add, not this fall, but Lord willing, the next fall, is an actual cafeteria hot lunch program where we offer a more nutritious uh, menu and uh, more than just pizza and chicken nuggets and, and things from fast food restaurants. Those are some things that we're looking to, to be able to add that we're very excited about. Also, um, we're looking at getting a separate fundraising um, plan, if you will, or division for the um, school in the area of fundraising. So a separate 501c3 for school fundraising so that we can take advantage of some grants and some other things that are currently not available uh, to the school. Right. So those are just some of the things. That, and that's, that's a very high level overview. Mm -hmm. um, our basketball court, we're wanting to get that uh, refinished and done uh, and some additional improvements to the weight room. Uh, we'll do all that, Lord willing, we'll hope to do all that at the end of this renovation project because the gym is having to serve a very multi-purpose function right now. We don't want to spend money on a floor that could be damaged. But um, there is partial funding from the construction project on this, but partial funding also from what will be coming to our school families to help us raise in GCA fundraising this fall. And um, let me just speak to this real quick. Got to keep my distance, but I, I get excited. Uh, I get passionate about this. I'm so excited to have you guys joining the three of us and, and our other faculty and staff. There is a fresh vision. There is an excitement. There is a passion for our school to get to the next level in a way that, that honestly, I'm coming up on 23 years here, and it, it reminds me of some things that I saw back in days past. And, and I'm really excited to see what God's going to do here in, in the upcoming uh, days and weeks. So our 1,000-day strategic plan is well, well underway yes. and has not been forgotten no, about. Not at all. Um, you kind of, Pastor, um, kind of going along with this theme of the strategic plan, and you had mentioned that one of your main responsibilities as the president of the school is to cast a vision. Uh, where do you see as far as the future goes? What are some things that we're looking forward to? Yeah. What are some things that uh, you kind of see down the road a little bit that you could share with, yeah. uh, with our families? So I talked a little bit about technology and, and the facilities. Um, you know, we're wanting to increase technology in the classroom, but again, 
with a cohesive plan, not just throwing money into mm -hmm. something that's not well thought out. Uh, our campus improvements, which by the way, if you did not hear about, if you're not a part of Levon Drive Baptist Church, I just did a Facebook Live event Friday night. We had a little bit of technological issues there at the <laughs> beginning, but we made it work. Um, if you would like to see a tour of the buildings, I'd encourage you to go and, and look at that. It's on Levon Drive Baptist Church Facebook page from this past Friday night, uh, the 27th of March, and uh, you can see the tour of the buildings. Let's talk a little bit about where I see the school going in the next five years. Um, I pray and I believe we have a solid working plan to get our school enrollment back to the 400 mark as quickly and aggressively as possible with this understanding. Kathy, if we wanted 400 students today, we could have right. it right. because you have done a great job and Stephanie has done a great job of making sure that the families that we interview and add to our school truly are here on the same page with us. Right. We are first and foremost kingdom education focused. And so while we have a commitment to excellence in academics and athletics and other areas, we are first and foremost about building the kingdom of God. And so for a parent that does not have a desire for their kids to be in a Christian school, if they're looking for only a private school education, we're probably not going to be a good fit. So we want to be selective. That doesn't mean a closed enrollment that you have to be perfect to come to our school. But it does mean that we are intentional about who we accept. And so getting our school ministry to a place where we can get to the 400 mark. Cole, they, the people may be wondering, why 400? What's magical about 400? Well, from a financial standpoint, once a school reaches 400 enrollment, there are opportunities for us to be able to do expanded things that we could not do right now. So we've done some things that I'm thankful for. We've rehabbed our softball field and our baseball field in the last couple of years. And unfortunately, we didn't get to have softball or baseball this year. Um, I have a desire for us to rezone our uh, athletic facilities. A lot of people may not understand why are there bleachers that look like they're portable and, and temporary. Why is a press box on scaffolding? That's because everything south of that fence on the parking lot is zoned a different property. And in years past, the city of Garland has not been open to rezoning. We feel like we're in a very good opportunity right now to do that. We will be doing that, Lord willing, this fall, making the necessary moves to get that rezoned. Why is that important? That's important because we are restricted to temporary buildings only. That's why there's a whole myriad of temporary buildings that serve as concession stand and ticket booth and, and uh, seating. Uh, we want to put permanent structures over there. I would love for us to tackle new lighting and, and be able to get the baseball field and the softball yes. field lit. I would love for us to have a new stadium over there. Um, these are things that we get to look at doing as we move forward over the 400 student mark. And so this is why it is so important, you know, the best advertising is word of mouth. And, and, and so can I just be transparent with you? One of the things you could do tonight that would be a huge help right there, you, we all have the time to do this, could you go leave us a positive Facebook review? Could you go out particularly on Google and leave us a positive Google review? Um, you know, we've made no... We, we've not tried to hide anything. We have been in a rebuilding mode these right. past four years, and I think we've made a lot of progress. But just to be blunt, we've got some Google reviews from several years ago that we would like to, to let people know there's a new and improved Garland Christian Academy. It would be a great help if you could go out and do that. Let your friends and, and family and other coworkers know about what I believe is the best kept secret in Garland, and we're trying to change that so that we're not the best kept secret in town. We want to be the most known uh, opportunity for affordable 
uh, Christian education here in, in this area. So those are just, uh, I, I could talk for 30 minutes about <laughs> the vision that I have for the future. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you, um, as a parent, th th this goes so much further than just being president of the school or pastor of mm -hmm. Lavondra Baptist Church. I also have two students, one that's finishing 10th grade and another that's finishing 6th. And so it is important for me that our kids that are currently here and the kids that are not even here yet, that we are planning with them with the future in mind. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'll add, um, not necessarily about future plans necessarily, but just about um, my heart and what I want the parent, uh, the families at home to know is after I finished my education, um, one thing that drew me back here obviously was the Lord but for people that don't know you pastor on a personal level and same thing for you Kathy and our school board um, one thing that drew me back was just the heart uh, and that the vision that understand that we're, we're not okay with just being status quo. status quo we we know we know where we want to go and here's the steps we're taking to get there and that's one thing that I, I was so encouraging and that drew me back to coming back to GCA was just that attitude of, we have a vision. We know where we're going. Um, and that's something that I wanted to be a part of, and that's something that I want to reassure parents from someone who, as much as I could have been an outsider, um, knowing that these are things being out of it for two years and at a, at a, like you said, a much larger school, that which is a great school, the school I'm at, um, and everything was going great there. But the Lord just said, this is where I want you to be. And um, I'm excited to be a part of that. And uh, just for those, like I said, those that don't know your heart and Kathy's heart and the school board, um, that is something that, uh, that was very evident to me um, as I've kind of started to get back into this and as we've had conversations over the last couple of months to get here. Um, kind of shifting gears, and then I'll go to Kathy on this, because uh, we did send out a parent survey yes. about how things are going online for our online learning um, and I know you have a little bit of information for our families about that. I do and I want to thank you for going on and uh, participating in the survey. We had 50% of our families that actually participated which we felt like was great because um, we did it on a Friday, we asked for you to be uh, finished with it on a Monday morning and 50% of you were able to do that. And I just want to go through um, some of the results of that and please know when we do these surveys, we don't do them and then just push them aside to say we've done them. We actually, uh, Ms. Brock went through and uh, compiled the information so that Stephanie Davis and I and even the school board could review it and look at it and see what would be helpful. But just a few of the things, um, one of the things we asked was the level of communication uh, between the school and for the parents and, and um, the teachers and the students. And 99% of you that uh, took this said that it was just right. It wasn't too much, it wasn't too little. Uh, but, but it was just right. And then um, how long does it take to finish the work? 75% said that their students take three to four hours. Um, and then 85% are able to complete their work. So we thought that that's awesome too. Um, the online technology as far as help that goes with that, Ms. Broad has done a great job of answering questions. I don't know what we would have done without her being able to do that. But 53% actually said they haven't even used it, which tells us that it's been going well, that the whole system setup has been, has been good. 45% uh, say that if they used it, it was helpful. So that was good. Um, we know that teaching or teaching online does not ever take the place of teaching in the classroom, but obviously we can't. And uh, let me just say this, we miss the students. Yeah, it, yes, we we miss the students and <clears throat> our, it's just not the same um, without the students here. But 79% stated that um, 
this virtual classroom experience has been very effective or effective and so that that was good news for us and then GCA's response to uh, continuing your child's education one of the things we didn't want to do Cole was just say okay here's your work mm -hmm. do it and we're done we wanted our kids to still be able to see the teachers mm -hmm. teaching because we feel like that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. we, we are called to do that. And 76% said that uh, it exceeds or far exceeds expectations. Um, so we took, again, that information, and some of you made comments, and we looked at that, and um, there's some good things that you have recommended. A couple of things that we just discussed together and then uh, with the school board last night that we feel like we can go ahead and put in place was uh, the some of the parents said could the teachers go ahead and put a week's worth of lessons on uh, online so that they could plan and some students like to move faster mm -hmm. than other students so that is one of the things that I have reached out to the teachers and asked them to do um, now some of them may have already uh, prepared and recorded for next week so it may be the week after that that mm -hmm. some of this happens but they they know that that's what they're going to do and then to help um, in this we realize that some parents are working on a device that their children are also having to use and that can get very complicated and overwhelming and so we are extending due dates for assignments to include the weekend. And so now everything as far as assignments will be due on the Monday following the previous week. Now that doesn't mean that all quizzes can just go up and stay up. There will be due dates for quizzes and tests and things like that. But these are some of the things that we felt like we could do. We're still looking at others we want to be able to help you that is our goal and as pastor said it is our desire to partner with you and um, that's that's part of our mission is to partner alongside of our parents to provide the education so that our our kids when they graduate garland christian they have the tools to reach others for the kingdom that's kingdom education and then um, to be well-rounded and to be able to be successful in whatever they do and whatever the Lord calls. So we appreciate um, those that answered the survey. It's been helpful for us. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of we had questions come in. We also had a lot of parent sets just sent emails, just encouraging emails, which were mm -hmm. so great. And before I turn it back over to you, Pastor Robbie, uh, one that we got from a parent, and they just said, I don't have any questions, but I thought I'd respond to your email. Thank you for taking the time to do a town hall and for the work you're doing for both Levon Drive and GCA during this time. This is a challenging time, but I rest in the fact that it does not impact my eternity. The Lord is in control. Mm -hmm. Our prayers are with you. Um, and those are just encouraging emails to get yes. as well. You know, as we wrap this up, and I, I want to ask you if, if, if you would allow us to have a time of prayer here at the mo and if, as we close in just a moment. But, you know, here's what we have to keep in mind. When we started this school year back in August, there was not a one of us that thought we would be ending the school year the way we are ending it. This caught us all by surprise. But you know who it did not catch by surprise? It did not catch God by surprise. God knew that this time was going to happen. And here's the thing that I take great comfort in. God uniquely equipped our staff, our faculty, our administration for such a time as this. God assembled this team together to lead through this time. And I, and by the way, God uniquely placed every student at Garland Christian Academy during this time. We are grateful that God has given us this opportunity to partner alongside you, our parents, and to help reinforce the biblical principles of a kingdom-focused education that is committed to excellence. And so, stay tuned. A lot's going to be coming down the pipe here in the days and weeks ahead, 
we will come out of this on the other side. Uh, this did not get asked, but let me just mention this very quickly in closing. Our school is financially strong. Now, we need everybody to continue and finish out the school year. Right. Would be, we, we could be in trouble if, if everybody just gave up and quit. Uh, but, but our school is strong, and we are able to weather this, and we will come out, I believe, even better on the other end. I believe our school is going to be stronger academically, stronger spiritually, stronger professionally as far as the teachers and their commitment to excellence in education. And I believe we're going to look back on this and say, wow, this was a difficult time, but this was a time that God showed up and proved himself mighty. So to that end, I'd like to close us in prayer. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for being a part of this. I think while we maybe didn't answer every email that came in, I think we answered the spirit of every email mm -hmm. that came in. And uh, so thank you for that. And um, we appreciate your input on this as well. I'm going to close this in prayer uh, as we wrap this up. Lord Jesus, thank you for Garland Christian Academy and thank you for not only our heritage and our past, but Lord, we look forward with great anticipation to a bright future that is focused on you, focused on ministering to students. And Lord, we look forward to growth. Lord, we look forward to seeing our school get to the next level, uh, being able to, to help and come alongside even more families than we do now. Lord, I pray for each school family right now that has been impacted by this. I pray our students would continue to learn. I pray that our uh, parents would continue to be able to uh, adjust to this new environment of which we're having to educate students. I pray for our faculty and staff, and Lord, thank you for how they have risen to this task. Lord, I pray that you would be with our administration and our leadership and give wisdom and help us to follow you. And Lord, we look forward to seeing what you are going to do in the days ahead. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for taking time to join us. To my knowledge, nobody in our school or church family has been impacted by the virus at this point, and we thank the Lord for that. But let's continue to pray for each other's well-being and safety. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless.